So the time has come today to talk about the sword. And the sword is the pain and the suffering and the wound that's a part of Advent, without which we do not get through life, without which we are not healed. We're told about it in Luke, the second chapter, Mary and Joseph had brought the baby Jesus into the temple and this old man, Simeon, devout, full of the spirit, sees them. And he takes the child in his arm and praises God, that's good. And he says, Sovereign Lord, now as you've promised, dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you've prepared in the sight of all the nations, a light for revelation of the Gentiles, glory of Israel, that's good. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them. And that's good, to be blessed by this holy man. And then Simeon said to Mary, his mother, not to Joseph, just to Mary, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel. That is not unmixed good. And to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. In other words, he's going to be rejected. He is going to face opposition. It will become his signature. That's not good. And a sword will pierce your own soul too. And then he leaves Mary. And she is left to ponder the sword. The word that's used for sword is also a word that can just simply mean great pain, unbearable agony. And he says it will pierce, and he uses a word that could be used to describe walking through an entire country where you penetrate every inch of it, your own soul. Now, this idea of Jesus bringing his sword is very confusing in Scripture because he's also the one who brings peace. He says, peace I give to you, my peace I give, not as the world gives give I to you. So we think, well, good, he's going to bring peace. But then he says in Matthew 10, don't think I've come to give peace. I have come to bring a sword. And, and there'll be divisions in families, father divided against mother, brother against sister. And so when they come for him in the garden, Peter thinks, well, okay, I guess the sword is the way. And Peter takes a sword, hacks off the ear of one of the soldiers. And Jesus turns and says, no, no, those who live by the sword will die by the sword. Put the sword down. So which is it, peace or a sword? Well, it's both and it's neither. It is not the peace of pleasant circumstances, and it is not the sword of power and vengeance. He will come not to use the sword to inflict pain, but to receive the sword and bear pain for the sake of love. He will be our wounded healer, and somehow by his stripes we are healed. And so we must talk about the sword because it will come into your life, into my life, as it did into Mary's. It's part of the story. And the healing of it is something that we see in Matthew, another story that's not often talked about during Advent, is when Herod, now Herod knew all about how to use the sword. Herod used the sword to inflict pain, and he was very good at it. Put to death, he had like 11 or 12 wives, put to death the only wife that he ever really loved, uh, the child that would have been his heir because he considered him a threat, his own mom. Put to death 70 people, had them all executed after he died so that there would be sorrow in Jerusalem. Herod knew about the sword. And when he heard that one had been born king of the Jews, he gave instructions that all the uh, boys, two and under, in the region of Bethlehem were to be put to death by the sword. And so Mary and Joseph and Jesus must flee. And Jesus must begin his life in exile in Egypt. And Matthew says this is to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice is heard in Ramah, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted, for they are no more. Now, the story of her mourning begins in Rachel's life. She gives birth to a child, and she dies in childbirth. It is her last son for her husband Jacob, and she names him Ben-Oni, son of my trouble, 
But then Jacob renames him Benjamin, son of my right hand. She's just outside of Bethlehem when she dies, so she's buried there. And centuries later, Jeremiah writes these words, issues this prophecy, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because as the Israelites are being exiled, sent to Babylon, they have to march past Rachel's grave. And so it's like her voice rising up from the grave. And this is Israel now standing in for all of humanity, living in exile and sorrow and mourning because of sin and a fallen world. One by one by one, Rachel's children mourn, mourn, mourn. And now Matthew says, there is one more child to no exile. And that child is the Son of God. And that is why that prophecy is fulfilled in Jesus. God chooses to suffer for us. God chooses in Jesus, in the incarnation, to suffer with us. And so the word comes from old Simeon to Mary. Jesus will suffer for us. Mary will suffer for Jesus. Every human life will know the sword. I suppose when you have a child, one of the things that you don't know when you have it in that joy is, in a way, you are handing that child a sword. You can wound me if you want. You can hurt me if you choose. And, of course, all of us who are parents often wield a sword over our own child as well. And all of us, as part of being sinful humanity, are much better at remembering the wounds that we have received than the wounds that we have inflicted because we live with our wounds. And then we have to go through life trying to figure out if only, what if I had done something differently? What if I had handled that phone call differently? What if I'd handled that relationship differently? And when the sword comes, it's painful because it changes not only our present and our future, but even the past. But I thought this was love. I thought I knew what this relationship meant. I thought, it, now, how can I ever understand um, whether or not I perceive reality at all? For me, this last year, one of the worst moments of the sword was when something came that I did not foresee, and the pain was so great, I was just laying on a fetal position on the ground, meeting with two people in official capacity was not a good thing to do. But I was so overwhelmed by pain, I did not know, I couldn't do anything else. I could not hold myself up anymore. Here is the promise. He bears the pain for us. He takes the pain in our place. He knows it. He suffers for us. By his stripes, we're healed. I think about Mary having to live with that prophecy, and a sword will pierce your own soul as well. When will it come? And, and then they have to flee because of Herod. Maybe that's it. And then there's the time when they can't find Jesus. He's a young boy teaching at the temple, and he says, didn't you know I had to be about my father's business? That's kind of a rejection. And, and then Joseph dies. Maybe that's the sword. And then Jesus leaves home, always a hard moment. Maybe that's the sword. And then he faces ridicule and opposition, and Mary goes to get him because the family thinks maybe he's crazy. And he rejects them. His response when he finds out his mom is at the door is to say, when, when he's told your mother is here, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Anybody who does the will of God. That's a sword. And then his brothers don't believe in him. That's a sword. Until one day, he's hung on a cross and his lifeless body is taken down and they pierce it with a spear and blood and water comes out and the sword will pierce your body too. But there is a resurrection coming. By his stripes, we are healed. He is the wounded healer. I don't know why this is so, I just know that it is so, that wounds can heal. That little plant behind me there, poinsettia, was given to us by friends who have lived with a sword for the last couple of years. I don't know why. I just know that I treasure that relationship. There's a closeness to them because of the sword that wouldn't be there without it. One of the reasons that little poinsettia is the plant for Christmas time is because of the color red, the color of his blood. 
I have a card here from a mom who I've talked to a couple times. I don't know her well, but she has experienced the wound of uh, being a mom and she would not have written me if it were not for our story. I don't know why shared suffering makes fellowship possible. I only know that it does. I have this little book here, Nancy and I pull it out in the mornings and there's a number of you who have endured the sword, are enduring it, and we're praying for you. Your names are in our, you don't want to be in this book, but I'll tell you what, I treasure those of you who are. A sword will pierce your soul. You don't have to run from it. Because oddly enough, you find Jesus in your wounds like you don't find him anywhere else. By his wounds, we are healed. So remember the sword today. It is not the end of your life. You will find Jesus there. I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget, we're going to be meeting live 7 o'clock.